Well, here we are with the lady who, uh, who made all this happen, the, uh, the big event of the Raven Horses at Mooney Valley, Virginia Johnson. Welcome to Melbourne. Thank and you And congratulations. Thank you. How long have you been planning this event? Oh, not terribly long time because this was announced last September in, um, in Abu Dhabi that we were going to get these races. We, we were over there for um, an international expo, an equestrian expo, which invited all the Arabian racing um, bodies worldwide, and that's where the announcement was made right. at a press conference. So, well, we're very not really that long ago. But, but I think uh, it's been a fantastic uh, turnout and very impressive, and we're very pleased that you've selected Australia's leading uh, female race killer. And the only one, mind you, but she's done well. Balnaring one day, Moody Valley the next. Thanks, Mr. Kent. So you can uh, perhaps take over in your new uh, prestige role. <laughs> Virginia, with um, Arab racing in Australia, in the 80s, of course, it was rather prominent, particularly in this state. When it sort of would peter out about around, you know, the turn of the century, 2000, and I think I actually called the last Arabian meeting in 2002 at the Great Western, what brought about the demise? Was it insurance issues? Were there many other issues? Oh, look, a, a variety of things, Victoria, but uh, insurance issues were probably one of the main ones. Also, there was a lot of opposition from the thoroughbred industry, which unfortunately we still face today. But I think every time we do something like this, they become more relaxed and stop panicking about these fire-breathing dragons called Arabian horses, because after all, all there's to send from them. Exactly, and of course, without, you know, without the Arab, we wouldn't have the thoroughbred or indeed the Australian stock horse. Um, the uh, New South Wales horse, which the they Wales, nicknamed the Whaler, yeah. of course, which have seen many military assignments. So um, some horses certainly with sturdy nerves and great ability. It's quite an amazing process really for them to think of this. But at the same time too, going forward, what do you think Arabian racing, which turn will it take here, here and in particular in this state, Victoria? Well, we, what we would like to see is a return to country racing again to really build a good foundation. Uh, for Arabian racing. I think, you know, we need to get a lot more people into it and let's face it, coming to Mooney Valley with your horse is fairly intimidating, especially at a black caviar meeting. And so we just want to build a real grassroots uh, foundation for Arabian racing and get, get people more experienced and the horses more experienced and get more owners into it. I mean, the people who are here today have literally stuck by us through thick and thin. They've travelled from as far away as far north Queensland with their horses to get here. And um, we... Despite all the wet weather. Despite all the wet. They got out before the wet started, Gosh. thank goodness. That right. would have been a disaster. Now, of course, this evening as well, the horses jump from a barrier, which is important. Mm -hmm. And I think that also proves a point too for people perhaps looking from the safety concern that all the horses are, are barrier educated, just like a thoroughbred. And it really is a similar, for, you know, a similar style of racing. But they do take a shorter stride indeed. But um, I think it'd be nice to see some distance racing in this state. And of course, you've got good support from Dennis Nepfine. Yes, we've got the support of the uh, Victorian government. He's um, said that on a number of occasions now that we have the support. Dennis, it would be very nice if you would help us with a little bit of funding <laughs> because the National Arabian Racehorse Association is basically myself and Maureen Milburn. Uh, we call each other um, the other's comical sidekick uh, at the best of times when our sense of humour is intact. But we really do need some funding because we're financing it ourselves. Well, we don't days. mind any sponsors that come on board. We encourage them as long as we get our normal commission. But we <laughs> wish you well in your your vision exactly, and, and your objective. Thank you very and, much. Uh, we, I think it's terrific. Uh, Victoria's got not only uh, an opportunity to call Mooney Valley, but to sit in the same race calling box as the Prince of Race Callers. Mr. Miles, Greg yes. Miles. It's a bit intimidating having uh, yeah. Miles behind you, but he's um, been a huge inspiration. But once again, Virginia, thank you for the opportunity thank and uh, Godspeed and good luck with Arab Racing here in Victoria for the future. Thank you very much, Victoria. Yeah. And thank, thank you for your wonderful call. It was very appropriate with our lady jockeys. Well, thank you very much. And we'll uh, move on to more interviews with owners and jockeys. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure here to present to you Kim Noble, who of course won the first of our Arabian races here this evening at Mooney Valley. And Virginia joins us once again by Kim's side. Kim, how did you feel out there on the hallowed turf that is Mooney Valley? 
Oh look, I knew I had a job to do and I couldn't let the occasion overcome me. Um, it was absolutely fantastic to be on such a historic race course on our beautiful Arabs and I think I and my horse actually thrilled everyone to bits. So <laughs> it was just fantastic, yes. Now Kim, for the viewers, of course, yourself, your husband Stephen, you've got a stable. You are, of course, well known training thoroughbreds. I see Stephen and yourself at the picnics as well. Your own work with the Arabs over many years. You've won many endurance events. Yes, that is correct. I got into endurance um, in 1998 as we'd had enough of thoroughbred racing for the time being and it was you put so much work into them so then you put someone else on, on board so that's why we started endurance where you're in charge of your destiny pretty much and with the Arab racing then you know same thing I'm able to put all the hard work in and then see it to fruition. Fantastic. <laughs> Now, a point that Virginia raised earlier, which is, um, I think, something that we could readdress again. There is a bit of concern from those in the thoroughbred industry that perhaps Arabs, their um, behaviour is concerning, is putting it perhaps politely, or, and we've heard uh, people describe them as crazy Arabs, and for the life of me, I cannot know why I've ridden both myself, and uh, I feel much more at home on an Arab, and a lot safer as well for someone who doesn't have the skills of a jockey, or someone like yourself, indeed, of course, as an endurance rider. I mean, you use Arabs as lead ponies and also as companion ponies as well for the thoroughbred, don't you? Yes, that is correct. They have a very settled nature, mm. contrary to the yeah, long-held belief that they are mad Arabs. And um, we have trainers quite frequently asking to use Nazik as a training buddy for their young horses in jump outs, as he's just so well behaved and so much better than the thoroughbreds. And they love him. So he's absolutely fantastic. And they can go out and work three times a morning, whereas a thoroughbred wouldn't hear of it. They drop down and lie on the ground saying, please don't do it to me. <laughs> and certainly you have the experience of both, so you certainly know what you're talking about. And I think that's a really important point. They have a wonderful temperament, a great nature, a great affinity with people too. I know I've been tossed off many a thoroughbred and also an Arab, but um, the Arabs have turned around to come, to come back and get me, even when I've fallen off and it's my own silly fault. So I think the connection between horse and rider, particularly with the Arab, is something that's um, an experience to behold. And I think for anyone wanting to learn riding as well, an Arab is a great start to learn with, don't you think? Yes, and they're all different types of Arabs too, where some are a lot more settled than others. And so you can have ones that are absolute gentlemen, bomb proof, and then you do get the ones that do need someone who has the skill. But then also, as you get to that, it is a great move on and you just fall in love with them so they're absolutely fantastic all round. Well Kim we look forward to seeing you not only at uh, the professional thoroughbred circuit and your husband Stephen of course but on the Arabian circuit of the future. I'm sure I'll be calling out uh, horses that you train and ride and own and indeed the picnic circuit as well. We look forward to seeing yourself and Virginia and ladies thank you very much for your time and most importantly congratulations with not only this evening but of course winning the first event with Warraway Nazik. Good on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Come to the races, uh, have a bit of a putt. And here's one of Melbourne's and perhaps Australia's longest serving bookmaker, Ernie Campagna. Good Carlton supporter from Logan Street. And he's head honcho, Damien, is that right? That's right. How are you going, Ernie? How long have you been uh, taking money from people? I don't know about taking money, but we've been bookmaking for 30 years. You survived? Yes. How did you cut all this modern technology? I don't, but I've got Damien that does a great yeah, job. What about every, and behind every good man there's a good woman? Oh, there certainly Where is. Where is she? She's Norma. Norma. Now, for my main sake, give us ten to win on number one. Well, I'll give him three dollars. Three fifty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's the uh, what's the odds of black caviar getting beaten tonight? Uh, almost impossible. Impossible. You get a whole money. Five on two. Caviar. No, caviar, no. Well, there you go, folks. I'm, I'm going to enjoy watching it going round. That's right. The two to win four from AD. And you're up to bit of three AD. Thirty on the two or three. Transaction nine. there. But as they say in racing, odds on, look on. Bernie, we'll see you for breakfast tomorrow morning. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Rebecca.